Ah, how y'all day been? Your boy has been pretty darn good, bro. Um, we got a little bit of a different video today for y'all, bro. Today we are with some Final Fantasy VII Remake content. Today is February 10th. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth drops on February, February, oh my gosh. Final Fantasy Remake drops on the 29th, not Remake, gosh. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth drops on the 29th, and I'm ready for it, bro. I played uh, the first game, the remake, the, you know, the first remake, almost two years ago, I think. It dropped. It dropped in 2020. I don't even like those type of games like that, and I loved every bit of it, bro. Today, we're going to be looking at that game's complete story explained, bro. Today, we got my boy Zygor Gaming, I say that, or XY Gore Gaming, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you a sub, bro, and I'm gonna give you a like. Um, I will be taking those away if I don't like this video. I'm ready for rebirth. Y'all already know I got y'all with the series. Grab your snacks. It's a 46 minute video. I'm not gonna have cuts in this video. It's gonna be straight. This video is gonna be straight raw. We're gonna be learning, relearning together. Um, the ending was crazy, but at the very, very end, you know, the ending where spoilers where everybody had the team die that <laughs> that was insane I, I was not expecting that and at the very ending ending i don't even understand what happened so today we're about to find out let's get to it grab y'all snacks bro final fantasy 7 remake when final fantasy 7 was originally released in 1997 on the we'll put the subtitles up it revolutionized the rpg genre Scores of fans were drawn to the game for its amazing Lie, it is. We, awesome we gotta check if we're recording, y'all. Incredible story. The game sold millions of copies in an age where RPGs had not fared well in North America. Today, it is recognized as one of the greatest RPGs. That's crazy how they changed this game to all time. What it is now. Phoenix announced the full remake of Final Fantasy VII in 2015. Oh my and made God. the forthcoming game one of the most anticipated in video game history. Fans of the series invested themselves they in announced the this in 2015 and it dropped five years later. I hate when developers do that. With the remake finally released, fans have come to find that there are several additions and changes to the storyline. The goal of this video then is to provide a complete storyline summary of the game, including content that is unique to the remake. And now, okay. let's get into the tale. Don't talk about the whole game, bro. Just talk about this game. This is a green light emanating from a pipe. As she runs out into a busy street, she is bumped into by a man passing Hold on. by. I know this is, we already breaking the rule, but I just got to look something up before I speak any words. How old is Tifa? Tifa. Okay, I just had to make sure. Drops her flowers. As she attempts to gather them, she is shown to reside in Midgar, a giant metropolis that is proportioned into sectors. The city is controlled by a quasi-governmental corporation called the Shinra Company, which operates from the center. Oh, this, oh, Shinra. Oh, that's all bringing back memories, bro. Oh, my gosh. Who the hell is this supposed to be? Just then, a train quickly speeds its way to the Mako Reactor. On board is Cloud Strife, formerly of Soldier, Shinra's most elite fighting force. That dude's so cool. The called terrorist group exits the train and ambushes Shinra's guards. Among those on the mission are Biggs, Wedge, Jesse, and Barrett Wallace, who serves as the leader of the group. As it turns out, Cloud has been hired by Avalanche as a mercenary to take part in a mission to destroy the Mako Reactor. Yep, yep, yep. Chapter 1, The Destruction of Mako Reactor 1. After bursting through a checkpoint, the team works to decipher the code on the door. Though Wedge is excited that Cloud is on the team, he makes clear that his participation... Okay, I remember my boy Wedge. Barrett demands the attention of Cloud, who's being paid for his efforts. Heading through the reactor, Cloud fights his way past soldiers. As Jesse unlocks another gate, she asks Cloud if he's close with Tifa Lockhart, the bartender of Seventh Heaven, member of Avalanche, and childhood friend of Cloud. Tifa got it. Answer, Cloud has a mental lapse and steps into the elevator. Meanwhile, I wonder how many times we're going to hear that during this video. Shira. Informs his superior that this man is a part of a group called Avalanche. He says he's still working to investigate whether it is the same group that previously made an attempt on President Shinra's life. As they take the elevator, Barrett rants about Shinra's desire to use the reactors to harvest the planet's Mako energy, a 
source of power. The longevity of the planet, he says, is at stake. However, Cloud makes clear that he is only on the mission for the money. He does not care about the Yeah, Cloud just wanted that bag. I remember that, bro. But he, he low-key started liking him, bro. He low-key started messing with him. A little bit. Cloud to arm the bomb. As he begins to do so, he has another mental lapse. This one's stronger than the last. Already, you know. a feather fall and fade away. After recomposing himself, Cloud sets the timer, and suddenly a giant enemy, the Scorpion Sentinel... I'm not gonna lie, when I fought this boss, I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to beat this game. <laughs> I was like, what am I supposed to be doing, bro? the infrastructure of the reactor begins to collapse, and Jesse is pinned down by rubble. Cloud frees her, and the two continue to run. As Baird and Cloud dispose of the remaining Shinra forces, and Jesse fine too. She ground. she looked good too. I think she one of the ones that um, you know, but she had to make that known. the order to use Shinra's own resources to finish it. As the reactor begins to break down, Cloud and Jesse travel across the balcony, leading out. A giant pipe narrowly misses Cloud and jumps off a falling platform, escaping in the nick of time. The entire reactor explodes, releasing a huge blast of Mako energy into the sky. Oh my god. Widespread power outages follow. Chapter 2 Fateful Encounters. Okay. The avalanche escapes the wreckage and begins navigating through the rubble. In the process, Shinra initiates a disaster warning in sectors 1 and 8. Barrett declares that the planet will not be safe until all the reactors are destroyed. That the fight against Shinra's campaign to exploit the it seemed like y'all destroying the world, Loki. Cloud demands his money, but Barrett says he will only receive it when back at the base. Jesse gives Cloud healing materia and thanks him for his assistance. In the process Thank you, Jesse. To Avalanche headquarters, Cloud witnesses a collapsing platform, and much of the area catches on fire. In another mental lapse, Cloud sees a vision another of mental lapse. Shinra's most legendary war hero and member of Soldier. Surrounded by a blazing inferno. Given that he says he killed Sephiroth with his own two hands, Cloud is shocked to see him. Sephiroth says the planet is suffering painfully and recounts the scourging of Nibelheim, Cloud's hometown. He asks Cloud one favor, to run away. As he lunges forward with his sword, Cloud awakens back in Midgar. How you kill him with your own two hands, but you can't even like... Well, you just live in your head rent-free, huh? Rent-free is nuts, bro. Aerith asks if he is all right. She gives Cloud a flower, hoping it will relieve him. Cloud warns that he is involved in danger, so she should keep her distance. Suddenly, Aerith drops her flowers and the swirling specters surround the two as Shinra forces try to stop Cloud. Aerith runs away in fright as the spirits follow, and Cloud fights off the forces. Surrounded by Shinra troops again, he dodges their bullets, then jumps off the top he of the He dodges their bullets. The he bursts into the car with the rest of Avalanche and asks if any of them have been attacked by the same invisible ghosts. As Shinra workers discuss the reactor explosion, Barrett defends his group as protectors of the planet. Using a computer screen, Jesse introduces Cloud to the architecture and layout of Midgard and warns that security checkpoints scan the IDs of those on board to isolate enemies of Shinra. Chapter 3 Home Sweet Slum. While you live in the slum. Success, Barrett tells them not to be too loud about their exploits. On the way back, oh, brother. Cloud notices the same black spirits he saw before. Nobody else see them? Heaven Bar, which serves as the headquarters of Avalanche. Oh my Tifa gosh, Bar Tifa got it, bro. Tifa so fun. Tifa the flower he was given and steps inside. Tifa I fold. Cloud she's arranged a small Not if I was Tifa, oh my gosh. In regard to his money, Cloud is given only a small portion of it, and Tifa says the rest will be paid later. That night, Cloud has another vision of Sephiroth in the room next door, and views a line of spirits mumbling something about a reunion. Tifa arrives to explain that Cloud's neighbor is actually... Y'all think that's going to be the name of the final in the final game? Final Fantasy VII Reunion? She says he's That'd be kind of tough. The next day, Tifa brings Cloud to collect money for water filters so that he can be repaid in full. Tifa explains that their landlady, Marl, is a good friend of Avalanche. Tifa recommends that Cloud make some connections in the area to make more money as a mercenary. To assist Biggs and Wedge with the neighborhood watch, Cloud goes to Scrapyard Boulevard to eliminate some monsters with Tifa. When he returns, Cloud experiences another brief mental lapse when asked about the history of his sword. 
Kika asks what happened to Cloud after he left Nibelheim, but he avoids the question. After doing some work in the slums, Cloud explains to Tifa that Soldier was nothing he originally dreamt of. He says he ended up doing it as a typical job, and left when he grew bored. As they return to Seventh Heaven, a man named Johnny is arrested by Shinra forces. I remember my nigga Johnny. A blasting agent was recently stolen from a Shinra warehouse, so residents were questioned and Johnny responded with resistance. Tifa says Johnny is not part of Avalanche, but says he must be helped. When they catch up to his Shinra captors, Cloud and Tifa overwhelm them and save Johnny. Cloud tells them to get out of town and stay safe. As the two return to the slums, Tifa says she thinks Cloud has changed quite a bit and notices that his eyes are different. Back at 7th Heaven, oh, she was fitting at him, bro. mission is on and heads into the secret area of the building to discuss the plan. Before she joins the discussion, Tifa offers Cloud a drink. Jesse says that Shinra has announced that the reactor bombing was the doing of Avalanche. She hopes that Cloud, as a professional fighter, will accompany the group's next mission. Tifa, who has moral issues with the bombings, has second thoughts about assisting. Barrett says Cloud won't be needed for the next job and to look for work elsewhere. He hands over the remainder of his pay and asks him to leave. Look at Cloud, y'all. That nigga Cloud like, damn, I had fun these last two chapters. Damn, I kind of want to come with y'all. And then he did, like, Cloud, Cloud you kill me, bro. Who asked him to meet her at the Sector 7 plate to discuss her next plan. Chapter 4, Mad Dash. Realizing that Jesse wanted to visit her parents, Biggs and Wedge surprisingly arrived to accompany her. The four travel to the plate on motorcycles, where Jesse proposes looting a Shinra warehouse for explosives. Shinra forces pursue the group, and in the process, a pompous soldier named Roach, who calls himself the Speed Demon, attacks on his own vehicle. Cloud uses his sword to sabotage. There was a fight with him and Cloud, right? And, and I feel like that that fight was so hard. Crew arrives at Jesse's home, Cloud learns that her parents work for Shinra and are housed in the employee residential area. Cloud receives a signal from Jesse to enter through the back door and retrieve her father's ID. To enter through the what? Instructions. She explains that it will be used to obtain a blasting agent for the next avalanche mission. While she does so, Cloud, Biggs, and Wedge are to occupy the attention of the guards. As they enter, though, the guards are strangely nowhere to be found. As he stops to think, Cloud views a flashback of his childhood in Nibelheim, where he and Tifa sat out by the They had the same guard. hair, didn't he? Cloud tells Tifa that he will shortly head to Midgar, where he plans to become a soldier like his hero Sephiroth. Tifa makes Cloud promise her that if she is ever in trouble... Oh, this dude used to suck up to Sephiroth, bro, and then you killed him? I don't think we dived into him and Sephiroth too much in this game, did we? Like, he just, he just kept popping up as, a, as an op. As a as a scary creepy stalker a little bit. Okay, then put. I, I'm pretty sure the demo for the rebirth is a flashback of him and Sephiroth, and I think it's in the middle of the game. And I really don't like that, but I'm gonna do the demo anyway because I heard you get to skip that part. You get to skip a whole flashback part in the game if you do the demo. So I'm just gonna do that. I guess. Tifa makes Cloud promise her that if she is ever in trouble, he will come to save her. To this, Cloud agrees. Did she just say, um, will you promise to me my, uh, uh, my savior and I'm the damsel in distress? Well, like, what? Why would you want to be that? And then she grew up to be a bad, bad, bad B. The group steps through the gate where they are stopped by Shinra security officers. She fucking box. She be a box. Yeah. I'm sorry. way past a series of enemies, the whole group is surrounded by guards and Roach reappears. As he gets off his speeder, yeah, that new road. Yeah, that was a fight here. I remember. He lunges his sword at Cloud, and the two begin battle. That was this. Roach is defeated. Everyone is surrounded by Shinra security forces. Roach uses his speeder skills to do away with most of them and rides away. The sweepers use their chains. Oh, he just wanted. He just wanted a one v one. By the surprising entrance of another avalanche cell. What are you doing? I'm watching Final Fantasy VII, bro. Can you like? You go get a Valentine's order early. What? Google Fiber. Google, why are you making so many like different products, bro? Y'all said go buy premium. You said no. a set of parachutes. The party jumps off the plate to soar down into the slums. Back at her house, 
Jesse embraces Cloud and fights him over the next night. When he sees Tifa again, Cloud offers his support. Wait a minute, did she give him a kiss? Did she just steal a kiss from Cloud, bro? Jesse embraces Cloud. He ain't that Eric, nigga. When he sees Tifa again, Cloud offers his support in light of her recent apprehensions. As he sleeps for the night, Cloud is awakened by the frightening appearance of black spirits. Tifa calls for his immediate help. So everybody else see it now? Cloud views the creatures spiral through the city. They attack Cloud and Tifa, but the two are able to withstand the shock and rout the enemies. In seventh heaven, Barrett and Jesse are in the process of fighting the spirits as well. After they are defeated, Jesse's leg is injured, so Cloud carries her back into the bar. Given her injury, Barrett tells Jesse she is out for the next anti Shinra mission, so he approaches Cloud for assistance once again. Cloud demands a raise to stay on, which Barrett agrees to. Wedge stays back to look after Jesse and Marlene. He only Barrett said that just Cloud so he can Tifa he can feel needed. Reactor five. Even though they the just, you know. The group boards the train to Sector 5 and it zooms toward the reactor. Chapter 5, Dogged Pursuit. On board, Shinra has activated security alerts. As businessmen rant about Avalanche, Cloud stops Barrett from creating a scene. When one of the ID checkpoint scans discovers a breach, Barrett calls Tifa and Cloud together. Running through the train, the three of them are eventually trapped within a single car. Barrett shoots out the door and uses the emergency stop button to put the train to a halt. The three jump off the train and onto the ground. As they run along the train corridor, it is revealed that Heidegger is tracking the group from Shinra headquarters. He reports to President Shinra that the plans for an extravagant surprise are proceeding as expected. When subordinates warn him about the potential casualty rates of the plan, he downplays their significance in favor of Shinra's political desires. After confirming their mission on a map, Cloud, Barrett, and Tifa follow the railway to the reactor. Heidegger decides that Avalanche must be crushed without mercy. Damn. Without mercy? You say he didn't give it to him for real? That nigga stood by that word. My bad, bro. Y'all said shut the hell up and watch. I'm trying my hardest not to speak, y'all. <laughs> After a call with President Shinra, he demands that the defect be fixed in time to deal with the three. Chapter 6, Light the Way. Yeah, shit happened in that chapter, huh? And cargo platforms, the group finds a control room. After circumventing a power shortage, a nearby gate is unlocked. On the way, they are startled by Biggs, who arrived early to secure a route to the reactor. As Biggs exits, the party proceeds forward. Chapter 7. A trap is... <laughs> no nap in that chapter either, huh? As President Shinra sees Avalanche enter the Sector 5 reactor. As he proceeds to the inner chamber, Cloud experiences another mental lapse... This dude need to hop off the... Like you said, chill, bro. My <laughs> fault, bro. This dude having flashbacks. He picks up a sword that looks like Sephiroth's. Cloud regains his composure. He arms the bomb once again. This one has a remote detonator rather than a timer. As they walk away, a giant projection of Heidegger fills the room and displays a live broadcast. It announces that Avalanche was observed entering the reactor and planting the bomb. Oh, wow. Damn, that dude, that dude said, hey, y'all, look at Avalanche. There's some dickheads, bro. That's literally what he did. The bomb. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, bro. S N N. Midgar today. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> SNN is crazy. <laughs> Come on, bro. Heidegger attempts to unleash the air buster to annihilate the group, but a subordinate. Oh! Oh my gosh, I didn't know what the hell that was. I said a ladybug just started flying. Where you go? The projection feed is cut. Nonetheless, the order Shinra forces to seize Cloud and his friends. Realizing that Shinra has turned the people against Avalanche, Barrett proposes taking down the machine on Shinra's live broadcast. Ooh. After working to sabotage the delivery of the Airbusters... Ain't that gonna make y'all reputation worse? Overhead platform. Suddenly, a projection of President Shinra appears. As Barrett condemns him for harvesting... President Shinra? This dude named the whole town after him? Or the company after himself? Oh, brother. The planet. The president responds that its power serves to benefit the people. 
The head of Shinra plans to accuse Avalanche of allying with Wutai, its sworn enemy, in an attempt to inspire pro-Shinra patriotism. Heidegger has also overridden Avalanche's bomb detonation system and has control over when the reactor bomb goes off. As his image disappears, Airbuster is dropped from an overhead helicopter. Dang, I remember this fight too. <laughs> and challenges the fortitude of the group. When it is defeated, the machine's explosion creates a gash in the bridge, and Cloud clings to the edge. Another explosion causes Cloud to fall all the way down to the slums below. Chapter 8, Budding Bodyguard. While unconscious, Cloud experiences a vision of himself, and Sephiroth approaching from behind him. When he wakes up, he finds that he is crashed. Oh yeah, this one he's, he saw Aerith, right? Church in Sector 5. There, he's awakened by Aerith. Oh, yeah, Cloud the won't hurt. girl he met before. When Aerith reveals that she has a special material woven into her hair, a gift from her mother. This Cloud game is beautiful, bro. Like, like, what? After Cloud agrees to stay around a while, Reno, a member of Shinra's Turks, enters the church and threatens to take Aerith. Cloud agrees to act as Aerith's bodyguard in return for a date. Cloud blocks the shots of what? Reno's lackey. Faces off against them. After they are defeated, a group of whispers stops Cloud from ending Reno. As the Shinra forces chase after them, Cloud uses the chandeliers to save Aerith and escape through the rafters. Passing through the Sector 5 slums, they see Rude, another member of the Turks. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, this dude was, this dude was so annoying, bro. The slums, they yeah, I'm stone cold. Scarlet, the head of Shinra's advanced weaponry division is being interviewed on a telecast. She says that both the Sector 1 and Sector 5 reactor bombings were the work of avalanche terrorists and assures the people Ooh. that Shinra will keep them safe. Aerith brings Cloud to her house where she introduces him to her mother, Elmira. Aerith tells her mother that she'll be- Damn, Cloud, that quick? Wait a minute, <laughs> that nigga, nigga met the, the mom that quick, bro. Day one? Day two, flowers. technically. In the process, Cloud helps bring some children to safety this led to another mumbling, tattooed man. As he touches Cloud, Sephiroth appears to him in a vision and speaks of a reunion. Along a path, Ruth notices the presence of Aerith. Noting Cloud's Mako eyes, he asks if he was the one that beat up Reno. When Ruth threatens the two, Aerith and Cloud then face off against him, and he's eventually defeated. Afterward, a call from Reno notifies him that he is needed for a job in Sector 7. Back in her garden, Aerith demonstrates her connection to all living things. When Cloud returns, she does some work in the house, and Elmira becomes aware that Cloud is an ex-soldier. She asks politely if he'll leave during the night so that Aerith doesn't get caught up in his dangerous lifestyle. Oh, wow. And just then, Cloud experiences a flashback from years ago in his hometown where he converses with his mother. He awakens within Aerith's house in the night and leaves as her mother asked. She gives him directions to Sector 7, Damn it, she she stayed up and wait. Look at her. She stayed up and waited. She said, get out of my house, nigga. They about to kill my daughter, bro. Chapter nine. You're not about to get her killed. Never sleeps. He doesn't get far away from her home. This girl, bro. Hot Cloud leaving. After a brief mental lapse, Cloud and Aerith see Walmart. Walmart? A Walmart. Sector six. What? Eventually, the two of them arrive at a playground next to the gate to Sector 7. There, Aerith sits next to Cloud and reveals that her first love was once in Soldier as well. When Aerith reveals his name was Zack, he has another mental breakdown. Bidding Aerith goodbye, Cloud prepares to take the passageway to Sector 7. Who the hell is Zack right supposed to be? Moment, however, he notices that a very different looking Tifa is being taken to Don Corneo in Walmart. She explains that he should head back to 7th Heaven she will explain everything later. Aerith warns that Don Corneo is a reprehensible man and declares that the two should save Tifa. Cloud agrees and they enter Walmart. And they learn that Don Corneo hosts an audition for beautiful women and that those selected by him often disappear for long lengths of time. Long length of time is crazy. Tifa got hands though. I don't think I'll ever see. Hey, this snow day look kind of cool. It looks a little cool, y'all. I look into it. I look into it. I look into it. And two of his peers are guarding the door to Corneo's manor. After being denied entry, Cloud and Aerith plan to gain knowledge of Corneo's tastes in women in their quest to track him down. The 
eventually, Cloud and Aerith enter the Corneo Cup, an arena tournament. Their goal is to win the contest so that Madam M will give Aerith a million guild dress to impress the Don and gain entry into his audition. In the process, they face off against the Hell House. Oh, I hated this! That? That? <laughs> that fight right there? Oh boy, that fight right there made me so mad, bro. That Hell House? That, that, that fight was different. That fight was different, bro. I... <laughs> Damn! Never mind. However, Cloud begins to believe that the place is more dangerous than they once thought, and aspires to assist Aerith. Ultimately, she pushes Cloud into a plan that requires him to dress in drag to enter the audition as well. With the help of Andrea Rodea... Cloud oh my gosh, I remember this. Press the Don. Now allowed to enter the manor, the two head upstairs. Inside, the Don's goons release gas into the room, and Aerith and Cloud become lightheaded. A few of Corneo's lackeys bring... Hey, the fact, hey, the fact that Aerith probably still want him even in this dress, she probably do too. He got it. Expectedly find Tifa. They learn that she discovered Corneo's men asking questions about Avalanche in the slums. Man, they're not even so questioning it, like... <laughs> so gather information from the Don. When they are told to meet him, they all step inside his room and line up. After gawking at each of them, he selects Cloud as his girl. That's crazy. His room. As Cloud resists Corneo's advances, Aerith and Tifa are sent to his lackeys. They knock his minions out and change into their normal attire. After Cloud knocks Corneo back with a kick, Aerith and Tifa burst into his room. Do y'all see this dude's body? <laughs> Why was he? <laughs> Why did he have an hourglass? Why? He got tits. Tifa What's going on, bro? When pressured to reveal why he had asked questions about Avalanche, he says that he was paid by Heidegger to find a man with a gun for an arm. After being threatened, he also reveals that Shinra is making plans to blow up the support pillar above Sector 7 to eliminate Avalanche completely. Before they can leave, though, Corneo uses a secret switch to send the three into the sewers. Meanwhile, President Shinra receives confirmation that the operation to destroy the Sector 7 plate is underway. As the head of Shinra's Urban Development Division, Reeve 2 sd asks the President to reconsider, but his suggestion is rejected outright. Chapter 10, Rough mm -hmm. Waters. In the sewers, he Cloud said they were going to go for their home, home, because like ain't that where his cloud lives, bro, Sector 7? What was I just looking at? This boss was a little crazy too, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Did y'all see his tongue, y'all? I know y'all saw the hands though. Look! On a giant lizard. Like, Spider Man as a sidekick, ain't it? On the way back to the slums, Cloud and Company passed through the train graveyard. Fighting their way through the haunted enemies, they are challenged by Ghoul. As the group continues forward, Sang and the Turks face resistance from the locals defending the pillar. An abrupt stream of ghosts swirl around the party and whisk Aerith away, and she experiences a gloomy vision of her youth. Cloud swoops in to save her from a frightening enemy, Eligor, but it soon returns to battle the party. After it is slain, the three observe the green lights in the sky and reach Sector 7 as Shinra is executing their plan. Chapter 12, mm. Fight for Survival. Barrett, Jesse, Wedge, and other supporters of Avalanche run to the top of the pillar as they try to fight Shinra off. A group of spirits block Cloud, Aerith, and Tifa from proceeding, but they fight their way through and witness Wedge fall to the ground. Cloud runs up the pillar to find the wounded Biggs. When Cloud promises to support the cause he lived for, Biggs dies. Nigga, this is where everybody starts falling off? Cause he lived for, Biggs R.I.P. Biggs, Biggs, man. Reno broadcasts an order to stop resisting and recognizes Cloud from afar. The falling pipes are kicked to the side by Tifa in time to save God Aerith and Wedge. Tifa decides to follow Cloud up the ladder and directs Aerith to Seventh Heaven to protect Marlene. Shinra has blocked the exit to the area, but Aerith encourages Wedge to remain strong. He eventually convinces the soldiers to open the gate, and Aerith runs through to the other side. She eventually makes it to Seventh Heaven. She finds Marlene under the bar. As she begins to escort Marlene Tifa daughter arrives at the door to the bar. Aerith cuts a deal with them to go willingly with Shinra in return for Marlene's safety. At the oh, same wow. time, oh, I do remember this. 
Keith and Claude reunite in the middle of the conflict, and when they get to the top, the two find Jessie using her explosives against Shinra troops. As they climb higher, Claude and Tifa find Jessie badly wounded under a pile of metal. Yep. Jessie says that she regrets the loss of life she caused, but Claude tries to give her comfort. As she encourages both of them, she dies. R.I.P. bro. Jumps on their mind, they finally reach the top of the pillar, where they find Barrett. Reno jumps onto the platform from the Shinra helicopter and attacks Cloud. Rude fires the helicopter's weaponry to stop Cloud from catching up to him, and Reno begins the plate separation process. For confirmation, he assaults the party. Rude's helicopter crashes, and he joins the battle as well. This Cloud should look active! Cloud, Tifa, and Barrett. Is my my leg jumping like, what's about to happen? <laughs> Tifa and Cloud Come on! Stop the plate separation. But Rude runs toward the console, and the spirits prevent them from stopping his confirmation. With five minutes remaining until the plates collapse, Barrett shoots the console in rage. The video communication reveals that Aerith was captured by Shinra, but she is pulled away from the camera as she tries to reveal her location. Seng boasts that the last remaining ancient is now in captivity. As the pillar begins to break down, the three use an escape line system to glide down. As they do, the entire pillar explodes, falling to the ground in a grand display of destruction. Dang. President Shinra watches from above in delight. Are you still going oh, so they did destroy Sector 7? Yes. That sucks. Well, Chapter that sucks. 13, <laughs> Broken World. As Barrett approaches the immense wreckage, he calls for Marlene and the rest of his friends. Enraged at the circumstances... Oh, is Marlene his daughter? Agony ...over the apparent losses. Nevertheless... He aspires to press on and instructs his friends to harness their anger for the future. Cloud reports that Marlene is fine and that she was found by Aerith. The group heads to Aerith's home, where they hope Marlene was brought. As Barrett explains that the ancients were supposed to be the original stewards of the planet, a vision of Sephiroth appears again to Cloud. He says that the blood of ancients flows through his veins and that through suffering, Cloud will grow strong. Still in complete distress, Barrett rushes into Elmira's house near the Sector 5 slums, but he is relieved to learn that Marlene is sleeping upstairs. Elmira discovers that Aerith has been abducted by Shinra, and the three apologize for their role in the debacle. Elmira admits that Aerith is indeed an ancient, which led her to believe she would one day end up in the hands of Shinra. She adds that Aerith is oh. not her daughter by blood, and tells a story of how she first encountered her. Fifteen years in the past, Elmira's husband was involved in the Wu Tai War. She says she waited patiently for his return at the train station, but he never arrived. Oof. One day she came across a young Aerith and her dying mother, Ifana. She asked Elmira to take Aerith somewhere safe and died at the train station. From that day forward, Elmira raised Aerith as her own. In her childhood, Aerith had uncanny premonition. One day, she even revealed the exact moment Elmira's husband had died which was confirmed by a letter that was received several days afterward. Whoa! One day, Seng entered Elmira's home. As the leader of the Turks, he revealed that Aerith was a descendant of the ancients. He professed that their mystical knowledge would guide Shinra to the Promised Land, a region of limitless Mako energy. The young Aerith fiercely denied being an ancient, but Elmira realized that Seng was telling the truth and knew exactly who she was. While Cloud hopes to rescue her from Shinra, Elmira believes Aerith will eventually be let go and hopes the party will not get involved. After pulling some residents from the wreckage, they find that Seventh Heaven has been totally destroyed. As they follow Wedge's cat, they stumble upon a secret underground testing facility where Wedge is clinging to life. Make it dead too? As Barrett tries to carry Wedge out, the gate closes and several mutated creatures attack. The team then enters battle with a failed experiment. To finish it, Cloud drops from the sky to slash it Barrett fires a gigantic blast into its body. It is then discovered that Shinra used the facility to perform experiments upon people by injecting mass quantities of Mako until they became mutated creatures. That's As insane. While visualizes himself in a similar test tube, he experiences another cognitive breakdown. You was in that before? Wedge, or something like it? the news that Jesse and Biggs are dead. After displaying his emotional grief, Barrett says that stopping now would only let their deceased friends down. Chapter 14, In Search of Hope. Wedge is placed in Elmira's home to recover. In the nearby garden, Tifa laments the recent losses and embraces Cloud. The next morning, Elmira gives her blessing to rescue Aerith. 
Garrett tells Marlene he has to leave once again and says he is one of the only remaining protectors of the planet. Back at Wall Market, Madam M explains that Corneo is searching for Barrett, as Shinra has placed a huge bounty on his head. When Just Barrett's manner again. Just he's him. by Leslie, who points a gun at the group. When they explain their desire to get topside, Leslie agrees to help in return for some assistance in the sewers. In its depths, a monster tackles Leslie and steals the key to the door. The team chases him, fighting various monsters along the way. After killing a monster, Leslie demands the pendant within a pouch that was dropped. As it turns out, Corneo picked Leslie's fiance as a bride six months ago, and she disappeared without a trace. Ever since then, he has sought revenge against Corneo. Damn. At the end of the sewer is Corneo himself, who greets Leslie. He attempts to use his gun against the Don, but he is knocked to the ground and his weapon is taken. Corneo berates How did you get washed by him? Plans ...and says he is now despised by the company. He says that Shinra plans to abandon Midgar and build a paradise in its place. Corneo Ooh. aims his gun at Leslie, but is stopped by Cloud, Barrett, and Tifa. However, he calls upon Absu to terminate the team. Did this dude here say he called a pawn? Track Corneo down again, and the team encourages him to continue to search for his fiance. Leslie gives the party grappling guns, which they use to traverse the wall to Sector Seven. That's okay. 15, that's cool. The day Midgar stood still. Now on top of the plate, Shinner forces attempt to impede the party, but they navigate the heights of Midgar. Oh my God, that is a beautiful way, sight scene. Sector Seven. Even though it's like the top, a destroyed city. Shinra's powerful security robot. When it is disabled, an explosion destroys the platform Cloud is standing on. But they use their grappling guns to return to safer ground. Chapter 16, That's the Belly it. of the Beast. Now at the zenith of Midgar, the team gazes at Shinra headquarters. While the company has set up extra security, the remnants of Avalanche decide to press on to save Aerith. On top of the Shinra truck, they enter into the garage. They fight their way into the lobby, where Cloud recommends heading to the upper floors. As Tifa retrieves a keycard, building security is abruptly disabled. On the 59th floor, Scarlet Damn. oversees constructive tests on Materia. That was crazy, I'm not going to chill, right? Stay relaxed. And decry Shinra's recent campaign of demolition. As they climb higher up, Cloud and his friends view a scale model of Midgar that propagandizes the company's use of Mako film that explains the history of the ancients. The end of the film transitions into a scene of horror, and the party views Midgar being destroyed by a swirling maelstrom of power and a giant meteor. Within the scene, Sephiroth appears once again. This dude, Sephiroth, bro, like, get out of people's heads. Niggas a dreamer. As it turns out, the mayor is employed by the other avalanche cell as a spy within Shinra. The group asks Domino about the location of Hojo responds that he can help them get to the 64th floor, but lacks the power to do more. With their upgraded key card and a series of comical secret phrases, he tells them they can proceed. On the 66th floor, Hojo tells Aerith of his plans for research on her. He says Aerith is the spitting image of her mother, who Shinra preserved for research after her death. That's crazy. As Hojo leaves, Aerith breaks down over this revelation. Heidegger reports That's that actually Shira, insane. The people of Creepy as movies. Avalanche entered into an alliance with Wutai. In an air duct, Cloud eavesdrops upon Shinra's executive conference. Palmer insists he observes Sephiroth moving through the building, but Heidegger thinks he is crazy. Reeve reports the Sector 7 casualties are catastrophic. As he begins to describe his reconstruction plan, Scarlet interrupts with the words Neo Midgar. The president says that Shinra will build a new Mako powered metropolis in the promised land of the ancients with the assistance of Aerith's cooperation. The president gives Hojo permission to breed Aerith to produce offspring to aid in his research. To breed Aerith. Barrett coerces him to open the door to his lab. He demands to know Aerith's location, but Hojo releases a giant enemy, a specimen of 0512, to fight What the hell? They overcome Did they just draw something? Like, <laughs> like bro, what is that design? He across the room and jumps out of the window. Aerith suddenly appears, Running up the stairs. Oh, this is when they met the tiger? That's kind of cool. Red 13 attempts to catch Hojo. Aerith's connection with Red 13 calms him, and he introduces himself. As they approach the elevator, Cloud has a vivid cerebral breakdown and sees visions of Genova, an ancient alien that fell to the ground and destroyed the civilization of the ancients. 
He mumbles the word mother and collapses to the ground. Meanwhile, Seng justifies the destruction of the Sector 7 plate by saying that someone else would have done it had it not been the Turks. Chapter 17, Deliverance from Chaos. When everyone awakens, Aerith says the party is in a room where she once lived as a little girl. She finally admits to being a descendant of the ancients, which are actually called the Central. Mm, no, no now, don't worry. Really. Shinra's belief that the promised land is real, but doubts she can lead the way to it. Red 13 says the black spirits that soar through the air are called Whispers, or Arbiters of Fate. According to him, they are drawn to those who attempt to alter the course of destiny, and assure they do not. Aerith announces that Shinra is Wait, let me see. or Arbiters of Fate. According to him, they are drawn to those who attempt to alter the course of destiny, and assure they do not. So Cloud has just been, like, altering the course of destiny, and then they're like, no. <laughs> no. Ledge appears in front of Mayor Domino, and an explosion places the building on high alert. According to Wedge, an avalanche helicopter will save the group on the roof. Finding Hojo's laboratory destroyed, the party reaches Genova in a giant capsule. Cloud has his most powerful vision yet, where he sees Sephiroth call the abomination his mother. The entire party then witnesses Sephiroth standing before them. Gee, the so they all see him now. Cloud breaks his compromised mental state and lunges forward at Sephiroth. However, he is knocked to the floor below. With the help of his friends, Cloud escapes from the predicament. Hojo interrupts an intra-party PHS conversation to demand research data. Split into two separate groups, Cloud and his friends cooperate with each other in pursuit of an escape. What the hell did he do that for? <laughs> Why did he just do that, bro? Stopped by a Shinra security device. Who tell me he died? He ain't died, did he? The sound of an incoming enemy echoes through a tunnel. It is the sword appeal, which bursts through a pass. The sword appeal. As damage is done to it, the foe bounces between both groups and threatens all party members. In the end, the combined energies of Cloud and his friends overwhelm it. After witnessing the battle, Hojo now says he has all the data he needs. On another camera, Sephiroth... What the hell were they trying to do? <laughs> what were they trying to do, bro? It clearly opens, like, towards them. <laughs> After pushing a giant metal gate out of the way, all party members are reunited. Taking the elevator back to Genova's chamber, the group realizes that the Abomination is now nowhere to be found, and a trail of purple liquid leads out of the chamber. As they follow the trail to the top of the building, they enter the president's Who is that? office. On the nearby balcony, oh, that the dude, Shinra is hanging from the roof. He offers money to be saved by the group, but Barrett refuses it. The president nearly falls to the city below, but Barrett lifts him up and reluctantly tosses him back onto the platform. He demands instead that the president tell the truth about what he has done to sabotage the city and vindicate Avalanche and the media. Instead of complying, the president bemoans a world without Mako and aims his gun at Barrett. Just as he begins to pull the trigger, a giant sword is driven directly into President Shinra. Who killed uh, Sephiroth killed him? Who appears without warning to strike the executive. He pulls his sword out from his body. That nigga's sword is so Barrett. long. Balls. As Barrett lashes out against him, Sephiroth stabs him through the torso as well. Oh! And mysteriously walks away and disappears. In his absence, Genova Wait, Barrett died? in the room and ambushes the party. With his defeat, Sephiroth emerges again and picks up Marco. A tattooed man that lived next to Cloud. As a Shinra helicopter swoops overhead, Sephiroth is seen levitating outside. As the group tends to bear it, it turns out that he was magically disabled by Sephiroth's blade, but has no wound. After climbing oh, okay. the ladder to reach Sephiroth again, he gazes into Cloud's eyes as the whispers attack from overhead. Sephiroth morphs into another tattooed man, then jumps to the city below. Nearby, Cloud and his friends regroup. As they plan to escape by way of a helicopter, a Shinra helicopter shoots the Avalanche Damn. chopper down. On board is Reno, Rude, and Rufus. I can't Rufus stand this man. Heir to the company. As Rufus steps out with guards, Cloud tells Barry This fight was a little crazy to too. <laughs> I remember this, the dog, bro, oh my god. He challenges Rufus himself. Rufus and his dog, Darkstar, attack Cloud. During the battle, Rufus flips his coins and fires his weapons at Cloud. Once defeated, Cloud slices Rufus's weapon out of his hands. Saved from Cloud by way of his helicopter, he declares that his ascension marks a new age for Shinra. Cloud nearly falls from the platform, but Tifa arrives to pull him up. A barrage of whispers obstructs Wedge from helping the others, 
but he hopes that he made a difference as he fades into a void of darkness. Meanwhile, Aerith Baron What? Barrage of whispers <laughs> obstructs Wedge from helping the others, but he hopes that he made a difference as he fades into a void of darkness. Meanwhile, Aerith Barrett and Red 13 ride the elevator to the lower floors. En route, they are startled by a giant machine called the Arsenal, which fires upon them and pursues the party in the elevator and on the floors below. When it is defeated, the three turn their attention to escaping the building. As Shimmer forces encircle the structure, they venture to the lobby. Even there, troops surround them inside. With them is Heidegger, who asks where the others are, and orders the forces to capture the Ancient, but to dispose of the others. Suddenly, the sound of a roaring engine is heard. There you go, Lots Cloud. Down from a yes, sir. He swings the vehicle against the soldiers in the lobby, evading their bullets and eliminating the threat. Meanwhile, Tifa has arrived in a truck to carry the others. Where? What? Seven Why does the truck door open like that? themselves onto the road below. Chapter 18, Destiny's Crossroads. From behind them, they witness an amalgam of whispers which quickly swirl around the Shinra building. From within, Rufus asks what they are. But Sang has no response. When asked for his orders, Rufus says to bring them in. Realizing that Shinra cyclists are now on their trail, Cloud and the others speed away once again. Using his sword to knock them away, Cloud maintains his composure. He avoids turtles such as When does he not Shinra maintain composure, bro? Other than that one time he attacked Sephiroth. He one of them. Alarmingly, a giant rolling machine jumps in their way. Good and uses lord. His incredible firepower to impede them. When Motorball is destroyed, Sephiroth briefly appears at the end of the road. Look at him! When gets to a stop, Sephiroth floats down from the sky above. He says that all living things are bound to Aerith. The whispers unleash a loud screech of terror, and Sephiroth announces that destiny comes. The scene shifts to Zack, who approaches Midgar years before the events of the game. As swarms of Shinra troops surround him with their weapons, he resolves to protect his honor as a soldier. Sephiroth gazes out into the night sky and says he is waiting for Cloud. He steps through an energy void and Cloud begins to follow. Aerith stops him and warns right. that it is the point of no return. This is why I need to pay attention. She uses her magic to nullify the darkness. She says that the voices of the planet cannot reach Sephiroth, who stands as the greatest threat to the world. Cloud agrees to help stop him, and the entire group resolves to cross beyond the barrier. On the other side is an alternative Midgar. Where a powerful magical force rips the infrastructure of the city asunder. Cloud is separated from the others as he has lifted into a whirlpool of energy in the sky. As he finds himself suspended in the air and overlooking the city, a mammoth beast, the Whisper Harbinger, begins to take form. As he destroys the city, Cloud finds Tifa and Barrett again. When they approach, the group is provoked into battle by several unique whispers as the Arbiter launches projectiles from the sky. As Cloud and his friends run away, he is safe from falling once again by Barrett and Tifa. As the crew realizes they are experiencing a desolate vision of the future that would come to pass if they failed to stop Sephiroth in their own time. Eventually, the whispers converge into Whisper Baha, a dragon hey, go back. a vision of again by Barrett and Tifa. As the crew realizes they are experiencing a desolate vision of the future that would come to pass if they failed to stop Sephiroth in their own time. Eventually, mm -hmm. the whispers converge into Whisper Baha, a dragon-like monstrosity. When it is defeated, the whispers appear yet again. As all three are beaten, the party experiences memories from other time periods. As the Whisper Harbinger explodes, the scene shifts to a brighter plane of existence. Sephiroth calls out to Cloud, and eventually a giant explosion consumes the area as Sephiroth emerges. Raising his hand, the infrastructure of Midgar is hurled at the party. Narrowly escape its impact. Cloud lands in a flat field, with Sephiroth appearing afterward. The two fiercely lock swords and go into battle. As more shrapnel is thrown, Tifa arrives to stop its effect. And she Damn! Cloud in his struggle against Sephiroth. After enough damage is done, Sephiroth throws a wing and knocks the two to the ground, pointing his sword directly at Cloud. In that moment, Barrett arrives to displace Sephiroth and provide support. As Sephiroth is defeated, Aerith arrives. Sephiroth throws whispers at the group. Dodging them, Cloud jumps up to a higher platform of Sephiroth and slashes down upon it. Suddenly, Sephiroth disappears and a giant explosion of magical energy forms. Cloud is transported to an area with Sephiroth alone. He tells Cloud the area that they are in, the edge of creation. 
does not yet exist. He asks Club to join him so that they can defy destiny together, but he refuses. The two powerful fighters face off once again. Cloud's weapon is eventually knocked from his hand, and Sephiroth fades away. Oh my god, uh, okay. He spares Oas. Heidegger, Seng, Scarlet, Palmer, and Reeve appear with Rufus. They greet him as the new president of Shinra, and he sits where his father once did. Realizing Genova has been taken by Sephiroth, Hojo overlooks her unoccupied chamber and begins to cackle with glee. The scene then shifts to the land overlooking Midgar. There, we see Zack once again, tired after defeating so many Shinra security forces. As he shuffles forward, he asks if Cloud saw what transpired. Immediately afterward, an abrupt explosion knocks Zack to the ground. In the distance, where Midgar once stood, the city is transformed into a more subdued version of the Midgar Zack knew. He stands up once more, attaches the Buster Sword to his back, and gazes into the sky. Children of the Midgar slums roam through the streets, and the Mako-powered elements of the city have faded away. Biggs awakens to the new dawn. Marlene hears the voice of Varen, who at the same point promises to return to her from a distance. Plob picks up the black feather that once belonged to Sephiroth, and pledges to follow him as long as he survives. Aerith, Tifa, Red Thirteen, and Barret all agree to follow suit, all committed to the preservation of a planet. As they do, Rain begins to fall down upon them. In the distance, the vision of a wounded Zack can be seen dragging a Mako-exposed cloud. Aerith says she misses the steel sky. As indicated by the game, the unknown journey will continue. And that concludes my complete storyline video for What? <laughs> also, please consider as indicated upon them. So was Zack like in the future or something, bro? In a different timeline of the future? But how did Aerith know about Zack? I know, I know Aerith is like the ancient. She she knows all. She's connected to everyone in the universe or something like that, bro. They were then taken by Professor Hojo and experimented on as part of a project known as. I, should, I probably shouldn't watch this, huh? I, I probably shouldn't watch this. I, I wouldn't be. So, they're probably gonna explain all of that in the next game. I just never thought I'd be excited to play like games like this, bro. Like a couple years back, I would never think. And I'd be excited for a new Final Fantasy, but we're here. We're here, bro. Definitely expect a uh, let's play of Final Fantasy 7, bro. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up, y'all. Share it, friend, subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one. I'm trying to travel the world. Bring you to all of the country, just mumble the word. Listen to everything you have to say to me. Make sure that every sentence is heard. I hope you're feeling this. Might as well give up your heart, cause you know that I'm still in it. Even through all of your carping, you know I still manage to catch it. You know that I'm real in it. I'm trying to take a chance. I see you eyeing another man. I better make